What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. Ready to get into this reaction video. Four crazy stories that prove Lady Bird was the toughest player in NBA history. Big shout out to I'm Week for Diki for one of her recommendations. Oh, assuming it's a woman. The profile picture shows a woman might not be. I don't know. But appreciate you for all the Larry Bird um, recommendations. I'm having fun learning more and more about Larry Bird. And if anybody else has any recommendations or any content you'd like to hear me talk about or react to, drop it in the comment section. Let me know something. All right. I am on record plenty of times saying Kobe Bryant's my favorite player. Says it in the title of the video. Anyway. Kobe Bryant was also the toughest player I have ever seen play during my time. I watched Jordan play the last couple years of his career, but I watched Kobe play his entire career, and Kobe has played through damn near anything imaginable. Injuries that required surgeries or multiple surgeries, he opted for treatment and played through it, and also en route to win championships. During those years, he was playing severely hampered, even on a shooting end. We're not going to get into that. Kobe was an absolute soldier, but let's see four more stories we just did a video about five times larry bird was injured and refused to quit you can check that reaction video out as well in the playlist but this time we got four crazy stories that prove larry was the toughest player in nba history we're gonna have to replace built ford tough with built larry tough or built bird tough i like that built bird tough built bird tough all right let's check it out We've all heard the stories about Kobe Bryant, and most of us have actually seen with our own eyes how incredibly tough the guy was. Trying to play on a freshly sprained ankle to wheel the Lakers to the playoffs, winning the championship with a fractured finger, he's got a great case for being the toughest player in NBA history. But then there's Larry Bird, and many people don't know it, but he might have been equally as tough, if not tougher than Kobe Bryant when it came to pain tolerance. Bird was such a warrior that he often didn't even like to let the team staff know he was hurt. That is, until later in his career when his back had deteriorated to an unbearable point. And because Bird was such a warrior, today I want to tell you guys four crazy stories about Larry Bird's insane level of toughness. What's up NBA fans, Dom2K on the mic, and you've probably seen the shots of Larry Bird torturing himself later in his career when his back was forcing him into retirement, but you might not know what allowed him to deal with that pain in the first place. It turns out Larry was dealing with physical ailments even before he entered the league. Before he'd ever right. played a game with the Celtics, he actually had his knuckle shattered by a baseball that put his professional career in jeopardy. But because he's Larry Bird and Larry Bird is from a different planet, he was able to put together a top 10 NBA career despite not ever having the same shooting touch before he shattered his knuckle. Wrap your mind around that for a second. Larry Bird accomplished everything he did in his career and he said out of his own mouth that he never had the same feel for the basketball after the knuckle injury. But as it turns out, that's just an appetizer compared to what he'd endured throughout his career. Let's jump into it. Number 4 hole in the face. Mm -hmm. I figured we'd start off with something crazy we've seen before. Russ. Remember when Russell Westbrook fell down after his free throw and got a hole kicked in his jaw? Yeah, that left a lot of us wondering if Westbrook was actually android a human because he got up, moved his mouth around a little bit, and finished up what was left of the game. Luckily for him, that was only about one second of game time. However, it turns out that 33 years earlier, Larry Bird actually had already accomplished his superhuman feat, and surprisingly, he did Westbrook one better. I originally thought there wasn't footage of this on YouTube, but I'm so thankful there was because you need to witness how brutal this was. In a 1982 game against the Milwaukee Bucks, Larry Bird drove left to the basket and tried to bank in a routine jump shot. It clanked off the rim, Bird went up to rebound his own miss, and was violently elbowed by power forward Ooh. Harvey Catchings. Where Westbrook's injury was an accident by his own teammate that didn't even look too bad initially, it's a bit difficult to look at this footage and say it wasn't on purpose, and you actually cringe a bit when you see how hard the shot was. Oh. The elbow practically knocked Bird out and left him lying on the floor for several minutes as he looked seriously injured. From what I can tell in the tape, the injury appeared to happen before the end of the third quarter because Larry Bird went back to the locker room and came back out before the period it ended. In the fourth quarter, playing with what we now know was a fractured zygotic arch, Bird would score eight more points including a poster dunk, two assists, adding some defense and hustle plays as he was even shoved out of bounds during one of the possessions. His efforts led the Celtics to a narrow win as he finished with 16 points, meaning he scored half of them with a fractured arch in crunch time, and even though we can't see it on the grainy 80s footage, Bird's jaw was depressed inward the same way Westbrook's was. After Larry left his heart on the floor for his team, he was sent to the hospital where doctors had to drill 
drill a hole into the side of his face and insert a medical tool to pop his zygotic arch back out. If social media had have been around with clear footage back in these days, this performance would probably be a lot more famous. We were shocked to see Westbrook standing on his own with a hole in his face. Imagine watching Larry Bird play an entire extra quarter while leading his team to the win. Number three, just give me a pause. Let me talk about that real quick. I don't want to interrupt the video. Bro, he's right. If social media, it's just the other thing, man. We got all these past players with all these iconic stories, iconic experiences that people don't know about today. So many people and the youth just doesn't understand. If social media was around back then, this would be a game for the ages, bro. They drilled a hole in this man's face after the game. Go! Dude, I... Listen... That was a vicious elbow, and that was clearly done on purpose. One time I was playing basketball, somewhat similar. I was going up for a rebound, so I'm jumping up. All my strength, push up, I'm in the air. So as I'm going up in the air, somebody gets the rebound before me, and he's coming down in the air, and boom, dude, put me out. I was out for a couple seconds, woke up, woozy, dude. My whole half of my face or eye or whatever was just... Blossom so big, swole up so much, looking like Quasimodo. But that right there, that was a vicious. That was a, that dude, that was, ooh, Larry Legend. That's only number four? That's only number four? God. Beer. It's understandable that Larry dealt with injuries like back problems and broken bones in the face. Those things just tend to happen when you're crashing into the floor and whatnot. But when Larry Bird had a toe infection, it really seemed like somebody was just testing how much he could take before he finally sat out a game. In the year 1985, Bird reportedly had a serious pain going on in his toe for three weeks that he played on, and he wouldn't bother to get it checked out because, again, he didn't like to let anybody know he was hurt. Finally, he let the doctor look at his foot, to which it would be found that Bird had a toe infection that would require his toe to be cut so the infection could drain. The doctor insisted that Bird take a shot of Novocaine to ease the pain, because the infection was actually between his toes, which was obviously gonna hurt a lot and then bird responded just give me one of those beers over there so he used that as his pain medication the doctor cut two and a half inches into his toe to let the infection drain larry wrapped up the foot and played the exact same night unfortunately i can't find any kind of information on when this game was who it was against or anything like that i can't even see how he performed but when he got done with the game the rap was obviously soaked in blood and he was in considerable pain during the game if it's anything like the other ridiculous games bird had after some kind of injury that should have had him sitting for days it's safe to say he performed well but the fact that he played with a two and a half inch cut into his toe with no pain meds is impressive enough for me number two double vision a lot of people can't even shoot when there's just one basket sitting still so <laughs> imagine trying to play in a professional game when you fractured your eye orbiter and you're seeing two baskets now the injury itself sounds pretty comparable to what Derrick Rose had not too long ago, the difference here being that Rose got hurt before the season and was able to get his problems to a manageable point before playing in a real game. Bird however would not be so lucky. In a 1988 game against the Cavaliers, Bird was on fire having scored 13 points in the first quarter, but when he spun away from Craig Elo with a clear lane to the basket, Del Curry of all people would rotate and hit Bird with a violent elbow to the side of his face. Mm. Kind of ironic that before Dell was raising the greatest shooter of all time, he was apparently trying to take out the best one of his generation. <laughs> Anyways, Bird sustained a fractured eye orbiter that again kept him on the floor for minutes. He went on to the locker room for treatment, came back out like he had done six years earlier, only this time he would score 18 more points to put the finishing touches on a 31 point game that included 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 4 steals on 11 to 20 shooting. But the stats weren't even the most impressive part. According to Larry, he played the rest of this game with double vision, and as he described it, he saw two baskets for the rest of the game, leaving him to guess which one he had to shoot at. <laughs> but that's not the best part either. Not right only in the middle. did he light Cleveland up, but we know double vision doesn't go away after one game. As we've already established, if there was any other option than to sit a game out, that's what Bird was going to do. He ended up playing four more games with goggles that I'm not even sure anybody really knew he wore, and in those games, he scored 36, 30, 28, and 34 points. Points. In typical Larry Bird fashion, he shot a staggering 55% from the field with that. Violent elbow, fractured eye orbiter, goggles, elite scoring, hitting on over half of his field goal attempts. Again, he's Larry Bird and Larry Bird is from another planet. 
Just to add some gore to the story, apparently after the Cleveland game where he initially broke the orbiter, he noticed his nose bleeding after the game. He went to blow it and his eye bulged out a bit. Just a typical day in the life of Larry Bird, I guess. What? Number one, Celtic Pride. You hear all this talk about Celtic Pride anytime we speak about the history, and Larry Bird contributed in big part to that as his career was wrapping up. Possibly the most famous scene from the ending of his career is uh, the one we've all seen. One, yeah. Larry was diving for a loose ball, goes crashing to the floor as his head bangs against it violently, and he just lays there as if his body couldn't take it anymore. Truth be told, it really couldn't. Bird was dealing with insane back issues by this point in his career, and it was through sheer determination that he was even playing by this point. However, the story behind this scene is that not only was Bird's back locking up on him, but the shot he took to the head actually knocked him unconscious for a second, and left him with a concussion that threatened to keep him out of the rest of an elimination game 5 against the Pacers. By this point, Larry was 34 years old and had missed 22 games throughout the season, and his best days had been stripped from him by an ever deteriorating back. He sat in the locker room debating whether to go back into the game as Boston had lost their edge without him, and most of the way through the third quarter, the advantage was with the Pacers. When Larry asked the doctor for advice, he said he should be done for the day, but by this point, we all know Larry just wasn't built like that. He was still breathing, so he went back into the game with the Celtics down by three, while they were being cracked over the head by Chuck Persons, I might add. With Bird back in the game, Boston would go on a ridiculous 33-14 run and went on to win the game by 3 points, sending the Pacers home for the playoffs. Bird finished with 32 points, 9 rebounds, and 7 assists while shooting 63% from the field. But again, that's not the most shocking part of the story. According to teammates like Robert Parrish, when Bird hit the floor, they weren't sure he was ever going to play again. Remember that this happened at the end of Bird's career, and yeah. after back surgeries yeah. and having to lay in a fiberglass brace for hours just to be well enough to play, some thought that the fall he took meant the end of his career. And it probably would have been if Larry Bird was from Earth, but instead, he went out and put up one of the most memorable playoff performances of all time, the kind of performance that really makes you sad that his career was really cut short by injury. So there you have it. These were four crazy stories that prove Larry Bird was likely the toughest player of all time. The crazy part about it? After reading the book he wrote with Magic Johnson and researching a little bit, I could have easily told Tina more. The truth that people don't really talk about in terms of Larry is that despite his amazing career, it was truly only a shell of what he could have been. Mm -hmm. As early as 1985, only six years into Larry Bird's career, he was already experiencing back issues that resulted from him doing concrete work around his house that he could have paid someone else to do. But that's just who Larry was, an incredibly hard worker that prided himself on being the same type of soldier his father was. Larry cherishes the story about his father when he came home one day from work and had a busted ankle. The next day, the ankle was so bad that Larry had to help him put the shoe on and his father went right back to work. It was the kind of example that led Larry to play through the ridiculous pain he began to experience really only a short way into his career. Bird played a total of 13 of the most memorable seasons any NBA player could produce, but imagine one of our modern stars only lasting 13 years. LeBron is already on his 14th campaign, Durant is already on his 10th, but what if those guys only played to 13 though? That's just for perspective of what a flash Bird's career really was. And we're lucky that for that short amount of time, he had the high pain tolerance that he did, because if he was actually human and sat out those Golly. games and anybody else would have sat out, <laughs> we would have likely seen even less of them. So in conclusion, I think Bird is proof that there is life outside of Earth and we really aren't alone. Somewhere out there is the planet Larry Bird came from where there's extraterrestrial life that apparently doesn't feel any type of pain. Shatter their face, knock them out, just give them a few minutes and they're right back on their feet ready to play. And if they're generous enough, maybe they're going to send another one like Larry to Earth to play in the NBA in the future. But if that doesn't happen, I'm very happy that Larry Bird was a part of NBA history. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Leave your favorite Larry Bird story in the comment section because I'm pretty sure you guys have some. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications on my video. I'm Dom2K and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, like I said in my other Larry Bird video, man, this, the league today is so cupcake soft, stupid. These, these players are pampered. They have everything that the players back in the day didn't have. They're like, they're, they're, and, and these guys are still out missing games, needing rest. And these guys back in the day were going through all the, the rigors of, of and even back, even back then, you, you, they're complaining about back to backs every now and then in, in this NBA with all the rest and medical treatment and staff and facilities and nutrition and diet. Uh, these, these athletes have been so good today to make sure that they are primed for basketball every day, and and, and they still can't get out on the court and play half the time. It's 
it's, it's baffling me. It's, it's it's cupcake soft, man. It's cupcake soft. Look at these guys back then. They even played more back to backs back then. I think he, I think even back then. I could be wrong, but there was a period of time where you have back to back to backs. Maybe at least once a year, maybe more. Like, listen, listen. And these guys, like he said, imagine if Bird sat out like players did today. We wouldn't have got the 13 years that we saw. That he mustered out through all that goddamn pain. All that, all the, those brutal games, those physical games. And them boys strapped on their work boots and went into work every day. And Converse's and Chuck Taylor's. Come on, man. What are we talking about, bro? Bird's a tough, he's a, he is a tough son of a gun, man. Tough son of a bitch. Man, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that is, that's right up there with Kobe, or if, like, or if not, even tougher than, that is, dude got a, went right after the game, got, freaking popped his eyeball out. Not, not purposely, but, golly, Bird. I tell you this right now, the person in my life that I know personally who has the highest pain threshold tolerance is my father. This guy, I'm convinced that you could sever half of his head and he'll just sit there laughing and go about his day. He used to be a machinist and he sawed his finger off, not completely, he was hanging on by like a thread, like the, the thinnest thread cut right through the bone. This fool doesn't go to the hospital, doesn't put anything on it, maybe some peroxide at most. And he just gets a whole bunch of tissue paper and just put slides the finger back over it and just starts wrapping it with duct tape, 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 and duct tape and glue. And it's just wrapping it, wrapping it, wrapping it, wrapping it. And he keeps it like this for days, dealing with this pain because he just didn't want to go to the hospital because... He's my dad. This is the type of stuff he does. He's 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 a wild man. And then after a while, I guess it started getting infected or whatever the case. And then my mom was like, no, I am forcing you to go to the hospital and get that thing fully removed and, and, and move on with your little nub finger. Now he has a nub finger. But yeah, my dude, I could talk about my dad for years. Crazy stories, this guy. Sheesh. I, I couldn't walk in my dad's shoes. Absolutely not. Hell no. Let me know what you think about it. If you have any recommendations for reaction videos or content in general, let me know. Drop it in the comment section. Open to new ideas. Open to talk about just about anything, to be honest with you. And let me know in the comment section if you have any Larry Bird stories or any Larry Bird information that you would like to share with me because I love learning from you guys. You are all basketball aficionados, all right? Take care. Be safe. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell, and I will catch you on the next one. We out, baby.